The title today, My Father, Your God. I'll start it with a kind of general knowledge question. Where does the Hebrew scriptures end in the Bible? If you think it's a trick question, of course it is. <laughs> it ends at Acts chapter 8. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. I've, I've slipped this in sermons before, but I th think it's particularly relevant. If you didn't know, Glenda Batchelor is a news hound. I almost couldn't get her to church this morning because she was following minute-by-minute -minute developments from last night's events. She wanted to know the true story, and yeah, so that's as much as I'm going to say, so I don't have to sleep too much on the couch tonight. <laughs> but maybe some of you are that way too, and you are disturbed, unsettled by last night's events. If you didn't follow the news, and some didn't, and don't, you know that Donald Trump, there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump last night. This is not a sermon about that. It's actually, I think, and, and I marvel sometimes that, oh, Lord, you, when you gave me this revelation, and it happens in my prayer time, and that's where I get my sermons, and I write them down, and then as Paolo hounds me to know what scripture are we going to preach on for the next three months so I can choose music to match it, I work down this list of words that God has given me in my quiet time, sometimes months and months ago, and it so often intersects with the days, the sun, you know, something pertinent for that Sunday. And so what I would have you carry away from here, I, I know, and, and make no mistake, I'm a proud American, and, you know, I put on my uniform, and have gone to war a bunch of times for this country, been willing to kill and to die. So I'm kind of patriotic. But as your pastor, as a pastor, period, I have to remind my Gentile congregation, and I haven't yet had a Messianic, a Jewish congregation, I speak to Gentiles the majority of my time, Say, Gentiles, you realize that part of the good news, to me a central anchor of the good news, is that God is still focused so much on Israel. And so the events, even if they happen big in our lives, if you really want, if you're going to be a news hound, pay attention to Israel because your God his father, that's where his focus is. Everything else on the side is just parsley. You can't say that. We're from Texas. Texas will never be parsley in the kingdom of God. Okay, I'm not going to go down that road. I've got a Glenda and I aren't ready to pack up the house today and move. But... Look at the scriptures. You know, Isaiah 48, I, it's part of today's reading because it is, you know, it's, it's, it's almost set on God's answer machine in prayer. O house of Israel, O sons of Jacob, I'm calling you, listen, listen, listen. His focus throughout, from the time of Abraham's covenant till now, is this thing where God commits himself to the Jews, to the descendants of Abraham. It's not accidental that the Muslims want to cut in on that promise because they recognize that, man, if we could really find a legitimate tie into God's promises to Abraham, we could get the deeds to Israel. Problem is, they don't have any legitimate claim on that. They've been disenfranchised. It's this promise to Abraham that God's commitment to Abraham that we see from the rest of the Bible, you know, so basically from Genesis until Acts chapter 8. 
So even in John, when we're looking at John and we hear Jesus' speech to the Jews, remember only that the Lebanese woman's the only one where Jesus says, okay, I will go outside of my mission of the covenant and you, Gentile, I will take care of your daughter because you showed such faith. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts 1 through 8, is this continuation of a God who is so committed to his promises, to this people, to the Abraham, you know, the descendants of Abraham. And that's why in John 8, Jesus is speaking and using Abraham. Now, it's clear from his accusers that they're pretty proud of their relationship with Abraham. But he ends that passage by saying, your father Abraham that you're so tied into, he rejoiced to see my day. And that good news to them, which they didn't get, he said, you don't know my God, you use his name, he's the God of Abraham, but you don't know him, I do, he's my father, He's your God, but this guy that you're tying all your hopes on to rejoiced to see my day. Gentiles, my fellow Christians here in this church, that should, that commitment, that way through disobedience, you know, part of the reason Isaiah is saying what you know, the Holy Ghost is using Isaiah's voice to speak to the Jews in Isaiah 48 is because they keep running away from him. They keep leaving him. They keep trying to be, you know, find some other God that they have control over. And he never divorces them. I know last week, I think it was, we sang Beulah Land. Was it last week? You know, Beulah Land, we used to know in church, we used to teach it in Sunday school that Beulah means married. Beulah land is the land married to God. Imagine God walking down the aisle and saying, I am so committed to this piece of geography that he says, I call you Beulah. I call you my bride. We're married. The good news for us is because now, through Jesus, that covenant that the Jews rejected then and will someday embrace, we get it. We are the ones. We are now his good news to the Jews because they haven't yet known their God, Jesus' Father. And through your and my witness and prayers, that's the hope of Israel. But our hope, as we see these disturbing events, is that a God who is so committed to a land and a people that keeps turning their back on him again and again and again, and yet he defeats their enemies. They're alive today to be waging war in Gaza only because God preserved them, defeated the Syrians, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Iraqis. I forget all of the armies that rolled on them in 48 and 53 and 57 and 67 and 73 God is so committed to them, he loves them, but he wants them to know his son. My father, your God. But he's also now, through Jesus, said to us, and I love you with that same kind of crazy love. We can get crazy as Gentiles and, and go off on our weird little tracks about, is it, unleavened bread or or can we have leavened bread at communion and and do we sing old hymns or do we sing modern praise songs all the crazy stuff that splits churches and people go their own way hear the words of a god who says you know from a savior who says my father your god it's that kind of love that is part of our good news let us pray oh lord thank you that you are so personal you stepped out of heaven. You stepped out of the pages of scripture and walked on planet earth. You walked in Israel to show how much you are committed to your covenants. And through the cross, we become part of that covenant. 
let us find hope in that even in the days that we may be afraid. You are committed to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.